The Industrial Revolution in the late 1800s and early 1900s brought about great change to the American way of life. Innovative machines and factories led to goods being manufactured at a faster rate. People started flocking to burgeoning factories for work, and distribution through railroads became popular. The rapid growth of the railway, oil, steel, and other industries made corporations a ton of money. Corporations then started to grow into a monstrous force that left a deep impact on national economics, the working class, politics, and the wealthy class. And while Congress leashed them in the early 20th century, big companies continue to maintain great power today. The reason why Citizens United uh, equated companies with people was because uh, of the fact that labor unions mm -hmm. were donating money to political campaigns and they were not affected by the uh, limitations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in order to get the court to rule that companies uh, and individuals could contribute without limitation to mm -hmm. political campaigns, the proponents of Citizens United uh, made that argument in the court bought it. Man, why did you accept bribes from Carnegie? Uh, because I needed the money, but I was going off this. Do you remember some of the laws you helped pass in exchange for receiving support from Carnegie? Not really. I kind of just passed laws blindly if you give me money. Why did you pass laws blindly when you're supposed to represent the people? Because it was easier to just pass it and just say yes or something. Since it would go look into it and they were giving me money for it, so I was, just, I had to. Does that make you a good congressperson if you don't really know what you're doing? No, but people still see me if I don't know what I'm doing. Don't you feel ashamed though that you lied to the people that you supported? That you're really just there for the tycoons, not the people in your district that you represented for only one person? I mean, I guess. Um, like, I try my best, but you know, these people, these rich people, they seem to know what they're doing. Why do they know what they're doing? I mean, there's a reason why they're rich, you know? Oh. Hello Colorado iron worker who works for Rockefeller. I heard you and your fellow workers are going to be planning something on this month of September in 1914. You don't mind describing what you're going to do? I'm going to go on strike. Why are you going to go on strike? Because we need higher wages and lower labor hours. Do you think you could live without them? Oh no, I can't live without them. That's why I'm striking for them. I feel like if we get paid more, I could afford to feed my family. And if I work less, I could actually, like, you know, uh, be in good physical form, you know? I, you just stay healthy, basically. I heard Rockefeller provides housing for you. How's, how are those housings? They're, they're crap. They're trash, you know? There's filth everywhere. There's rats, you know, uh, you know, dead rats and everything. It's no different from living, you know, on the street. That road link does a lot of wage stuff. That's honestly what it comes down to. A lot of people are sick of working all these hours that they're saying that they're going to give us overtime, they don't even pay their overtime up. The agenda there is to weaken unions because the 1% views organized labor rightly as a threat to their ability to um, keep more for themselves and uh, push working conditions and wages um, even lower. Being in a labor union has its pros and its cons. One of its cons is that as a group, if you fail, you all fail as a group, not as an individual. Yeah, it's been one year since we have met, Einer Miner. What has happened in between the last time we interviewed in September 1913 and 1914 of this September? Uh, we, were, uh, we, we were kicked out of Rockefeller's housing, and we were forced to live in tents. I heard it was in Ludlow. I heard you had to live there in the winter. Yeah, I lost a couple of uh, close friends. I maybe lost a, well, I lost a child. Not maybe, but uh, it's very, uh, it's very sad. I heard eventually Rockefeller caved in. Uh, yeah, he caved in. Uh, if we moved back towards his housing, he, uh, 
you know, he made us work less and he gave us higher wages. Life going, David Koch. It's pretty good. What makes it so good? Um, I live a pretty nice lifestyle. I get to do what I want. Like, I get to have vacations and take breaks whenever I want. Do you not mind me asking you how you got all that money in the first place to be able for vacations? Well, my dad, hmm. he was a very great businessman. So. What do you do with the money that you don't spend on vacations? Um, I invested into different things. Like what? Thank you.